Solar energy is simply the energy provided by the sun in the form of radiant energy, and the device that harnesses this energy for generating electricity is called a solar panel, also known as photovoltaics, which basically means light electricity. Whether they're on your calculator or orbiting our planet on satellites, they rely on the photoelectric effect, the ability of matter to emit electrons when it comes into contact with light. Let's take a closer look at what happens when the sun rays shine onto a solar panel. Sun rays are made up of light particles called photons. As rays hit the cells, these photon particles transfer the energy they possess to the semiconductor, most commonly silicon. This energy absorbed by silicon knocks off electrons out of the atoms, letting ions to flow freely. You can think of this like a pool game where the white ball is a photon atom, which passes on its energy to the colored balls it strikes. However, that is only half the work. Now it needs to hurt these free electrons into an electric current. This is done by creating an electrical imbalance within the cell. By using other elements with silicon, two types of silicon are created, one with a spare electron and one with missing electrons. When these two are placed side by side, the free electrons from one silicon jumps over to the other one, making one positively charged and the other negatively. This creates an electric field across the cell. Since silicon is a semiconductor, it also acts as an insulator maintaining this field, which causes the electrons to flow in the same direction, providing us with an electric current. Solar cells are most commonly located on satellites, roofs, and at solar farms. There are multiple reasons for the use of solar energy at these locations. First of all, solar energy is the only source that won't extinguish, it is not limited, and is free. Another reason is that panels occupy quite a large space, which is why they're most commonly located on rooftops and solar farms outside the city. These locations are picked to increase the amount of solar radiation exposure, which has an effect on efficiency. Now when it comes to efficiency, they have a mechanical efficiency of a range between 15-20%. to 20 With some work, scientists believe that solar panels can reach their theoretical limit, which is 85-90% to 90 efficiency. To look at solar panels on an economical aspect, solar panels cost $0.36 per watt for establishing solar farms, which translates to $1.5 per watt for homeowners. Taking in calculations the industrial price, it takes $180 million to construct a 500 megawatt solar plant. However, on average, it costs $238 million to construct a 500 megawatt coal-fired plant. That means that it costs 1.32 times less money to construct a solar plant than a coal-fired plant. As every system requires maintenance, solar panels have operational costs as well. For homeowners, operational costs include maintenance, monitoring, repair, and insurance, which in total is typically $4,000 thousand to eight thousand dollars per panel for its whole lifespan. The Government of Ontario has launched a fund called Ontario's Green Investment Fund which has awarded $325 million to green energy projects including solar power. Another program called Eco Energy for Renewable Power by the government has also funded about $1.4 billion over 14 years to solar power and other renewable powers. According to an article by Policy Options entitled The Next Chapter in Ontario's Drive to a Clean Energy Economy states that new projections for 2016 include $478 million towards green energy including solar and 1.9 billion in 2017 and 18 years. These funds have been used towards the research and development of solar panels. Even though tax money does not go towards the construction of new solar power projects, the operational costs of these projects are paid by taxpayers. In addition to government funding, Sustainable Development Technology Canada SDTC, is an independent organization who has awarded around $8 million towards clean tech funding, including solar. In addition to SDTC, Samsung and its partners brought $5 billion in investment to the government of Ontario to create new solar farms. By 2018, the government is expecting the private sector investment in Ontario to be $12.9 billion towards just solar industry. Solar panels are most commonly installed on rooftops and at solar farms around rural areas. According to an article entitled Environmental Impacts of Solar Power by the Union of Concerned Scientists, smaller scale solar panels such as the ones built on homes and commercial building rooftops have minimal location effects as it doesn't occupy ground space in cities. But for solar farms, depending on their location, they can raise concerns about land degradation and habitat loss. The same article also states that unlike wind facilities, there is not much opportunity for solar farms to share land with other needs such as agricultural use. This requires solar panels to be built on land that is further from cities where the power is needed. Solar panels are safe and beneficial as they don't produce harmful gases or toxic air. According to the US Department of Energy, few power and generating technologies have as little health concerns as solar panels. 
yet it can be a potential health and safety hazard due to the dangerous materials used during construction. Toxic byproducts such as silicon tetrachloride and dusts are created, which poses a threat to workers who work in this field. In addition to this possible concern, solar panels can give off negligible amounts of radiation depending on the technology, just like many electronic devices do, creating a health hazard towards people who have electromagnetic hypersensitivity. These are people who get sick from exposure to electromagnetic radiation in very small amounts, such as the amount that comes from cell phones. People with EHS may not even be able to enter or be around such a building with solar panels on the roof. Looking at the overall social implications, solar panel power plants cost less than coal fire plants, which generates the same amount of electricity. Even with the potential risks, they still cause a less risk on health compared to using fossil fuel sources. With effective regulations and maintenance, any danger to workers and the public can be minimized. Overall, with its cheaper cost and healthier system, solar panels are beneficial solutions when compared to conventional fossil fuel technologies. As solar energy sounds all bright and shiny, pun intended, it does have some environmental costs that come along with it depending on the scale of the system. All utility-scale solar farms require relatively large areas for solar energy collection. The usage of large lands can raise concerns about interfering with existing land uses, as said before, according to an article from the Union of Concerned Scientists entitled Environmental Impacts of Solar Power, a utility-scale solar farm can use from 3.5 up to 10 acres per megawatt. That is approximately 7.5 football fields big. The use of large areas of land due to solar panel sites can also affect native vegetation and wildlife, causing loss of habitat as outlined in the programmatic environmental impact statement. However, this problem does not occur with small-scale solar panels such as the ones used on roofs and the utility-scale land impact can be minimized by building the sites on lower quality lands such as brownfields and abandoned lands. Another concern about solar cells are the materials involved in the emissions of the life cycle of panels. Fabricating these panels required the use of corrosive chemicals such as sodium hydroxide and hydrofluoric acid and many more hazardous materials as an article entitled How Green Are Those Solar Panels Really? from National Geographic State. Although these materials are sealed, there is a potential of environmental contamination if the panels were damaged or improperly disposed, causing serious environmental threats. Even though there are no global warming emissions of using solar panels, they do have life cycle emissions. According to a report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change named Renewable Energy Sources and Climate Change Mitigation, most estimates of life cycle solar panel emissions are between 0.7 and 0.18 pounds of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour, which is far less than the life cycle emissions rates than both natural gas and coal. On top of these environmental concerns, solar panels have environmental benefits as well. Solar energy is an unlimited source of energy which causes no concerns about extinguishing like non-renewable energy sources such as coal, petroleum, and natural gas. It requires essentially no water to operate, thus does not use up or pollute water resources. As stated in an article entitled Solar Energy by National Geographic, every hour the sun beams enough energy onto the earth to meet the entire population's energy need for an entire year. It is a source that's noise-free and pollution-free, creating a healthy environment and generating electricity in a cleaner way compared to non-renewable sources. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, coal and natural gas generate between 8 to 51 times as many greenhouse gas emissions as home solar. Looking at the overall environmental implications, it can be seen that while solar energy does have land use concerns and potential chemical threats to environment, its benefits surpass its concerns. Unlike other energy sources such as coal and natural gas, it produces a clean and renewable energy that is overall a beneficial energy solution. The sun is the humankind's first resource, and with a little work, it may be the last one we ever need.